Now that the seams are in place, you are ready to separate and unwrap the clusters. Keep working on your file from earlier. If you need to catch up, open the file UV Unwrapping Dinohead Peel.max. Make sure the dino head is selected and isolated. At the Unwrap UVW level, open the UV Editor. In Polygon Subobject mode, select and move all polygons outside of the packing area. Deselect all polygons when done. Select one polygon on the neck and use the Expand Face Selection to Seams tool to select the neck cluster. Instead of mapping the clusters using conventional methods like planar or cylindrical, you will instead use the peel method, which works much better with organic forms. Keep in mind that different artists use peel in different ways. The method you learn here is one of many. With the neck faces selected, click on the icon labeled Quick Peel. The cluster gets unwrapped in a way consistent with the geometry, keeping the integrity of the curvature where needed. You can then use the Freeform tool to scale and reposition the cluster inside the packing area. You can also see how the checkered pattern is consistent and undistorted in the viewport. Try it again with the horn. Try to scale it by keeping the checkered pattern scale consistent between clusters. The default checkered pattern in the packing area often makes the unselected clusters difficult to see. You can instead use the material you created for the occasion. Select one of the ears. and try the quick peel on it. Again, it works beautifully and it spreads on both sides of the single edge you did not identify as a seam earlier. Do the same with the other ear. and adjust the scale and placement and even rotation in the packing area. Try to use as much space as you can without having clusters overlapping one another. That was easy. However, you sometimes have to work a bit harder with more complex areas, but peel mode helps you with that. Select the lower jaw and apply quick peel on it. Again, it seems to be working just fine. A closer inspection at the front of the jaw shows some obvious distortion of the checker pattern. The texture is trying to squeeze itself in a tight area. It's like force spreading a piece of fabric beyond its intended elasticity. So you're going to need to help it a bit by adding another partial seam. Switch to edge mode and select two or three edges along the center line of the lower lip. Convert these edges to a peel seam. Switch back to polygon mode. When you use peel unwrapping tools, it's always best to work them at a polygon level. Click the Reset Peel button. The cluster gets reoriented, that's okay, you'll fix that in a moment. More importantly, the front of the cluster is now a bit different with the addition of a seam splitting the lip. This ensures the texture stretches less than it did before, although it still requires a bit of adjustment. Click the Peel Mode button to enable this mode. Move the cluster out of the packing area temporarily. Notice that its vertices turn blue. When you are in peel mode and you move a vertex, it automatically gets pinned to its new location. 
This is courtesy of the auto pin mode. But what exactly does it do? To understand it better, switch to vertex mode and switch to the move tool instead of the freeform tool. Actually, you can use either one, but the move tool makes it easier to visualize. With all vertices selected, click the unpin selected icon. Now all vertices are free agents again. Click anywhere in the UV editor to deselect all vertices. Now, try to move three or four at different extremities. See how the whole cluster reacts to that as each move vertex gets pinned in place. This is quite a powerful tool that enables you to reshape a cluster in order to minimize distortion in some areas. You can also use it to define a loop as an axis of symmetry. For example, select two adjacent vertices on the center line and use the loop tool to select the whole string of center vertices. Pin those vertices and then align them horizontally. Now, select all other vertices and unpin them. Notice how the cluster is clean and symmetrical again. You can still fine-tune the lip area to minimize distortion. Always make sure that there are no overlapping faces or edges. When you are happy with the results, you can exit Peel mode. You can now switch back to Polygon mode, Freeform mode, and Scale, Rotate and place the cluster in the packing area. You can also unpin the vertices if their blue display bothers you. This leaves you with the cranium part. In Polygon mode, select that remaining piece and apply a quick peel to it. As with the jaw, there's a bit of unwanted stretching happening at the front. Do what you did before, select a couple of edges and convert them to seams. Switch back to poly mode and reset the peel. Go into peel mode. It resets the cluster slightly. Move the cluster aside. Its vertices get pinned automatically. You can certainly use the same method as before, pinning a center line and reshaping the cluster at a peel mode level. You can also try and relax the solution. Exit peel mode and switch to vertex subobject mode and to move mode. If you want, you can select and unpin all vertices. With the vertices selected, go to Tools, Relax. There are multiple methods to choose from, but artists seem to agree that relaxing by face angles seems to work best. Use this method and click on Start Relax. Vertices start spreading and adjusting. When you feel activity has subsided, click on Stop Relax. Verify the results in the viewport. Dismiss the Relax dialog and use the Freeform tool to rescale and reposition the cluster in the packing area. Make last-minute adjustments to the positioning of the clusters. To make them easier to select, use the Select by Element option. Switch off that mode before moving on. Your model is now unwrapped, but you still need a bitmap for it. In the next and last movie in the series, you render out a template of your UV coordinates that will serve as reference for painting a bitmap in Photoshop.